Put our man Teddy Cakes out. Folks, you can read Teddy's Tiger Forex report every Monday. He puts out a new issue. You can head over to the front page of TFNN under the newsletter tab. You can subscribe for $97 a month, folks. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. You have a couple great webinars in there as well. And uh, always interesting on Wednesday. We're a week out from a Fed decision. Teddy Kegsack, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. So we got a little bit of calm action right now, uh, as opposed to usually. We come to you on days when we got some economic data, et cetera. And today we got some calm action. What do you think about the calm potentially before uh, next week's Fed meeting? Yeah, I think that's what you can expect right now is a lot of sideways like this morning. Now you're starting to see the dollar index um, start to drop a little bit because you have a nice rally going on in the pound dollar. And uh, the other currencies are starting to also move stronger against the dollar. Like, in fact, <clears throat> up until about 20 minutes ago, the only currencies that really were moving was the uh, U.S. dollar Canada to the downside and the Australian dollar U.S. dollar to the upside. Everything else was fairly flat or just going you know sideways and if you look at the euro especially i mean it's been in a dollar 50 range now for two and a half weeks basically so and i think that's what you're going to see going into next week's meeting as well so i wouldn't get too i wouldn't get married to any longs or any shorts right now in any of these markets until after next week yeah, I was going to ask you, you know, just cuz I was jumping around the forex market getting ready for you to come on the program today and it's it's interesting how we were in such large trends for so long, like the euro, of course, like the dollar. Uh, we've rebounded on both of those charts, inverse, of course. But now we kind of have some chop in these markets. And as a Forex trader, are you looking for those larger types of moves? Because I know that Forex can trend, man. We saw it happen, boy, over the last couple of years or so. But we have had a little bit of calm in these markets right now. And how you approach that as, as you know, the trend that we just came off is so large and now we're stuck somewhat in a range. At least I'm looking, you know, you look at the euro, you look at the dollar where we are compared to the beginning of the year, et cetera. Uh, yeah, well, that's exactly what we're in right now is, you know, currencies especially trend 70 percent of the time, 30 percent of the time they're in consolidation periods, which is most most markets are the actually the opposite. And that's what we're, we're in right now. You know, I've been saying this since, you know, the end of last year that you can expect us to start to head into this, you know, consolidation period as the Fed eases off on their rating at the rate hike, you know, rate that, you know, remember last year they were raising a half a point at a time. Now they've been doing a quarter point at a time. And there's also other central banks that have been, you know, raising rates too. So that's where we're starting to see that, you know, consolidation factor and the big range trade. I mean, look at the US dollar Canada. <clears throat> that's been in a wide range trade now for six months, you know. So, I mean, some of the other currencies were still trending yeah. into the past couple of months. But if you look at especially over the past month and a half or so, most of these currencies have gone sideways, you know. And that's to be expected right now as interest rates, you know, if you look at how the yield curve has moved, you know, it's it's come back a lot off of its, you know, last fall was when it really set, you know, that the highs, you know, and we should be actually be trading in those areas right now when we're not. And I think that's what we've done is we've set the the, the, the the lower and upper bands for both interest rates and currencies until we start to really see a, a real reestablishment of a trend. Meaning like, for instance, you know, they've been calling for the Fed to stop hiking rates now for half a year and they're still raising rates. I expect them to raise rates in the next meeting. I expect them to continue to raise rates throughout the rest of the year. I don't even see them pausing. I don't see them being aggressive. But I still see them continuing to do what they're doing. You know, I mean, none of the none of their target numbers are close to where they want to be at. So since we're not even remotely close to their target inflation, let alone other um, numbers as far as un unemployment and things like that, you're going to see that that momentum come back no matter what as we head into the fall. But right now we're in a consolidation period. And remember, we have an election year coming on. So this, it usually starts the fall one year ahead of the election when the markets start to really start to move again. And I think you'll see that, you know, right now we passed the debt ceiling, blah, blah, again, you know, but these are those are factors, too. They're going to come and hit the economy. And those numbers, I think we're going to start to really see as we head into the third quarter as well. And then we'll get our trends reestablished. Yeah, the Fed deal is going to be pretty cool to watch man um you know a week from today of course a lot of speculation that they may not hike uh maybe that's their one meeting off i mean they you know they're talking about in the dentist he's saying you know if the fed continues rate raising how will the regional banks survive and when i first heard some of the speak of from the fed speak talking about the potential pause or whatever it is i had to say to myself 
boy, things are maybe a little bit tougher than maybe we thought in some of those areas in the banks. And this is my own perspective, just because you lay out the case pretty reasonably. And I think even the Fed would say it. The numbers aren't even close. So what are you doing even talking about pausing? And boy, some of the strains, I mean, commercial real estate, everybody talks about those numbers mm -hmm. kind of stark. Um, but all that can provide some volatility for sure. Uh, let's jump to maybe the yen if we could. I want you to jump to yen. I sure. want to talk about crude as well. Um, what do you want to jump to? Okay, well, the U.S. dollar yen obviously today is pulling back a little bit because the dollar is, is under pressure. Uh, but I would, I think that's a short-sighted move. I think that no matter what, the U.S. dollar yen remains in a buy-break position. And I'd like to see that the trend. I think if there's a trend out there in a currency, it probably is the U.S. dollar yen right now. So any type of any type of um, retract, you know, correction to the downside, I look as a very nice buying opportunity. You know, especially with crude being stable right now. And if you do see any really big spike in crude also, I think that would help to give a little lift to the U.S. dollar yen trade, especially with the, um, the you know, as, like I said, unless the Fed does pause, I don't see that happening. You know, that that pressure, we should we should those pricing levels should should gravitate to higher levels just because of, like I said, the yield curve is out of whack for where it should be. I mean, if you look at where it was, you know, just last fall versus now. How many rate hikes have we had? The market should be, not, it's not that it should be lower, but if the pricing was right then, that means that we our trend should be reinforced once again and the bear is gonna come back. And when it does, you'll see a big lift in the dollar as well as the, as the yield curve goes higher. It's pretty cool, man. I can't wait for the press conference next week, no matter what they do, um, <laughs> because they're gonna have some explaining to do, I think, no matter what they do. As in, if they hike, boy, that's right. gonna take some explaining. And if they don't hike, um, they're really going to have some explaining to do because you lay it out, mm -hmm. man, the numbers. Uh, seems like there's a tremendous amount of risk pausing at this point when we all know what inflation does to, you know, savers most of all, man. That's just a and we don't one. and we don't know what's going to happen with the ECB or the B of, uh, you know, the ba Bank of England either. You know, so yeah. um, how, how are they, you know, inflation numbers, how, look at how they've been for the past two months, especially in the U.K., if we get another, you know, couple of months of numbers like that in the UK, you have to assume that, you know, and I don't like to use that word ever, but you would think that the Bank of England is going to have to do something to defend, you know, to, to fight inflation. If they you got to think that, you know, yeah, you just you got to. That's what's surprising me in the Fed. So I'm with you, man. Teddy, I appreciate it as always, man. I hope you're well. Thanks for the time, and we'll talk to you next Wednesday, man. Thanks, Tommy. Sounds good. Thanks. Take care. We'll be right back, folks.